In this lesson, we're going to create the monsters. We'll create a monster class, a factory class to instantiate the monster objects. We'll create a random number generator so that we can randomly give loot to each monster. And we'll add in some images so that we can display pictures of the monster in the UI. The first step is to open up the solution and we're going to create a new monster class in the engine project in the models folder. This class needs to have the base notification class as its base class because we want to be able to use the on property change to notify the UI when the monster's hit points changes. But for most of the properties, we're not going to need to notify the UI. We can use the auto properties for the name, the image name, maximum number of hit points, the reward gold and reward experience points that the player will receive when they defeat the monster. And we'll also have a inventory property that's an observable collection of item quantity. And this is where we'll have the loot item. So if the player defeats the monster, they can collect whatever items the monster had on them. The hit points property is the only one where we're going to have a backing variable and use the on property change notification because that's the only thing that we really need to let the UI know has changed on a monster object. And the class has a fairly standard constructor. We're going to pass in the name, the name of the image file for the monster, the maximum hit points that the monster can have, the current hit points, the reward experience points, and the reward gold for the monster. Inside the constructor, we'll take those parameters and we'll set them equal to the properties and we'll set the inventory property to a new observable collection of item quantity. Because if we don't do this, then this inventory property is going to be null and we can't add items to it. First, we need to set it equal to an empty list so we can add items into it. The next step will be to modify the item factory class. Since we have some monsters with some new loot items, we need to go into the static item factory function and add those new loot items as game inventory items. Here I'm adding a snake fang, a snake skin, a rat tail, a rat fur, a spider fang, and a spider silk. So as you can probably guess, our three monsters are going to be snakes, rats, and spiders. And I have all of these loot items start at 9001 for the ID, just to kind of group our random monster loot in one section. The third step is to create a random number generator we don't want every monster to have the same loot, so we want to randomly assign what loot the monster has. So we'll create a new random number generator class. This is in the engine project, just right at the top level of the engine project. It will be a public static class because we don't want to instantiate it. We're just going to call the static number between function to generate the random number for us. And as you can see in our function, it's a public static integer its name number between, and we pass in a minimum value and a maximum value. So if I wanted a random number between 1 and 20, I'd call number between 1 and 20. Now in the .NET framework, there's really two ways to generate random numbers. You could call them deterministic and non-deterministic. A deterministic way of generating random numbers is one that follows kind of a detectable pattern. If you spend some time, you can figure out the pattern of the random numbers. A non-deterministic one is one where you, you can't determine a pattern. It's really much more random. I've included the source code to do either way inside this class. The source code in the number between function right now is the non-deterministic one, the one that's much more random, but it's much more complex. It's using this random number generator crypto service provider, and it's doing all kinds of advanced byte manipulation. This is pretty advanced stuff, and I don't want to get into the details of it in this lesson. So if you want to use it, I'm just going to say copy and paste this and use it. If you want to know the simple way to do it, that's a lot more understandable, I've also included this function down here called simple number between. And this instantiates a random object called underscore simple generator. And to get the random number, we call the simple generator dot next, get the next random number between the values. And we have to add one to the maximum value because the way it rounds this 
if we say between 1 and 20, it's actually between 1 and 19.99999. So we add the 1 to actually get up to the possibility of having a number 20. If you want to use a simple one, you can just delete all the code for the number between and the private static RNG crypto service provider variable. And then just rename this simple number between function to number between. The fourth step is to add in the images for the monsters. In the engine project, in the images folder, create a new folder called monsters and import the three images that will be either in the description of the video or in the lesson if you're watching this on my site. Those three image files are giantspider.png, rat.png, and snake.png. Then, just like with the location images, for each of the monster images, you'll need to right-click on it, select Properties, and set the build action to Resource, and the copy to output directory value to do not copy. This will actually include the PNG files inside our assembly, which is how we're going to reference them. So we don't need to worry about these being separate files that might accidentally be deleted. And you'll have to do this for all three images that you include. And the final step is to create a new monster factory class. This will be in the engine project in the factories folder. It's called monster factory. It's similar to our other factory classes. It's public static, and we have a public static function called getMonster that accepts a monster ID. Then this function creates a monster object and returns that. In the item factory class, we created a list of the standard game item objects, and then we called the clone function on each of those objects to instantiate a new item object. We're going to do something a little differently for the monster class, just so you can see a different way to do it. In this case, we're going to use a switch statement. This switch statement will execute a section of code depending on what the monster ID value is. So whatever value we pass in for the parameter, it's going to look for the case that matches that ID value, and it's going to run the code inside that case section. So if we pass in a one as the monster ID, it's going to run this code here from line 12 to 19. It will instantiate a new snake object, and its parameter values are going to be snake for the name, snake.png for the image file. It has four maximum hit points, four current hit points, five reward experience points, and one reward gold. Then we're going to call this add loot function that we'll look at in a minute, and this will randomly add some loot to the snake. And then on line 19, this function will return the instantiated snake object. When you have a switch statement, one thing you need to watch out for is that each case you need to either return, so it finishes executing the code and returns that object, or you need to have a break statement. And that basically says stop executing the rest of the code inside this switch statement. Otherwise, you could fall through into the case 2, case 3, and so on. Since we're instantiating a monster object and returning it here on line 19, we don't need a break statement. And if we look at the rest of the switch statement, we see monster ID 1 is going to create our snake. Monster ID 2 is going to create our rat object. Monster ID 3 is going to create our giant spider and we have this default down here. Within a switch statement, the default has the code that gets run if none of these case values are true. So if none of these numbers matches the monster ID, the code in the default section is going to run. And in this case, we're throwing a new argument exception. This is basically an error. And the error is someone passed in a monster type ID for a monster that doesn't exist. So now let's take a look at the add loot item function. This is a private static function. It takes in a monster object, an item ID, and a percentage. And if we look up here on line 34, we call it for the giant spider. We pass in the giant spider object. We pass in an ID, which in this case is 9005. If we go back to our item factory and look, 9005 is our spider fang and the percentage is 25. So we want this to have a 25% chance 
that the monster is carrying a spider fang. Then our next line is giant spider 9006, which is the spider silk. And we put in 75 because we want to have a 75% chance that the monster for their loot, they have the spider silk. The add loot item function calls our random number generator, the number between function, and it gets a number between one and a hundred. If that random number is less than the percentage that we passed in, so for the spider 25 or 75, then we're going to add a new item quantity object with the item ID to the monster's inventory. And this is how we're going to randomly give loot to each of these monsters. That's all for this lesson. In lesson 7-2, we're going to add monsters to the locations. And then in lesson 7-3, we're actually going to start having combat with the monsters. I'll have a link below this video to the support page where we'll have the source code and a link to the image files. And if you have any questions, you can either leave it on the support page or leave it below the video, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.